Raise your right hand, sir. Arnold Boyd, being first duly sworn by the court to tell the truth, was examined and testified upon her oath as follows. Take that seat. Thank you. You may proceed. Good morning. Good morning. Please state your name for the record. Arnold Edward Boyd, Jr. Okay. And are you giving testimony here today, Mr. Boyd, pursuant to an agreement you have made with the government, your lawyer, and yourself? Yes. And of course, you are the defendant in this case? Yes. Have you pleaded guilty? Yes. And what have you pleaded guilty to? Conspiracy to distribute drugs and money laundering. Okay. And does your Rule 11 plea agreement, which is your agreement with the government, provide that you will be sentenced to a term of imprisonment of 97 to 121 months? Yes. Okay. And did you also enter into a cooperation agreement with the government? Yes. And what is your understanding of the terms of that agreement? My understanding of the terms is that upon truthful testimony, that the government will ask for a downward departure of 50%. Okay. And you understand that you would reduce your sentence to 49 to 61 months? Yes. If all of the terms of the agreement with met? Yes. Is it your understanding that the government will make a recommendation to the court? Upon truthful testimony, that's my understanding. Okay. What is your understanding as to who will make the final decision about what your sentence will be? Judge Khan. All right. Pull the mic away from you just a little bit. Okay. And Mr. Boyd, I'm going to ask you, where do you reside, generally speaking? In Detroit. Okay, and where were you raised? Southwest Detroit. Okay, and what city in Southwest Detroit? Detroit. In Detroit, okay. And are you familiar with Terry Flannery? Yes. And what about Demetrius Flannery? Yes. And how do you know them? I grew up in Southwest Detroit, right down the street from Terry and Demetrius Flannery. Okay, so how long have you known the two of them? As long as I've been able to go outside on my own. And what about Benjamin Johnson? Do you know him? Yes. Who is he? He's my half-brother. And after being indicted in this case, you have already indicated that you agreed to cooperate with the government. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And have you already pled guilty to your involvement in some criminal offenses? Is that right? Yes. And were those criminal offenses in association with Terry Flannery and Demetrius Flannery? Yes. Okay. And what is the relationship between the two of them, Terry Flannery and Demetrius Flannery? They are brothers. Okay. And based on your involvement in this case, what is it that you did, if anything, with Terry and Demetrius Flannery? At first, I started around 2002. I was Terry's personal driver. I used to drive him to various states throughout the country. I used to fly money via the airplane to different places for him. Then I became a driver and later became a manager in the Detroit area. Okay. Before that, did you know what type of business Terry Flannery was involved in? Yes. And what business was that? Selling drugs. And how did you know that? My brother worked for Terry late 80s, early 90s, selling drugs for him. Okay. And what did your... He sold drugs for him? Yes. What, if anything else, did you do for them? He distributed drugs throughout the Detroit area for Terry. Okay, and that is Benjamin Johnson, is that right? Yes. That is the brother to which you are referring? Yes. Okay, and then at some point you said you became involved. You were Terry's driver at first? Yes. Personal driver? Yes. And when is that that you became involved in this organization? 
I believe it was early part of 2002. Okay, and how long were you a driver for Terry Flannery before you graduated to what you said was a driver of cocaine and two months or so? Two months or so? A few months or so. And do you remember the first time or the first incident in which you transported either money or cocaine? Yes. Okay, and when was that? That was 2002 as well, probably spring, summer 2002. Okay, and describe to the jurors the circumstances of that incident. Well, I was, I was down in Texas. We was in a house that Terry owned in Plano, Texas, and I had been down in Texas for a few months, so I was kind of getting agitated and was ready to go home because I wasn't really used to being away from home as long as I was, so... Why were you in Texas? What was the significance of Texas to Terry Flannery? Texas is one of our main hubs that we utilized for this source of drugs. Okay, and what type of drug is this? Cocaine. And just describe generally before you get into that first incident, were others involved in the distribution of cocaine besides you and your brother and Terry Flannery and Demetrius Flannery? Yes. Approximately how many people would you say were involved in this? Hundreds of people were involved. And, I'm sorry? In totality, hundreds of people. And was the distribution of cocaine limited to the Detroit area or did it extend to other parts of the country? It extended to several states in the country. Can you identify some of those states, please? Yes. Detroit, New York, Washington, D.C., Missouri, Alabama, Tennessee, Atlanta, California, Texas. Was Kentucky one of those states? Yes, Kentucky. Okay, and were you responsible at some point for making sure that drugs reached some of these locations? Yes. Which locations were you responsible for getting drugs to? All of the locations I named. And did you... And how is it that you accomplished that? That is, get the drugs to the other locations. We started reprocessing our drugs. Okay where we utilized a method where we was basically stealing drugs. Out of five kilos cocaine, we would come away with one free kilo of cocaine. So we had a lab, so to speak, that we did this processing in, and the lab had moved to Detroit. So once the drugs leave the source, whether it be Texas or California, they came straight to me in Detroit. Okay, so in addition, you just mentioned about California. In addition to Texas, another source state for the cocaine was California? Yes. Okay, and the cocaine would come to you in Detroit and you would participate in the reprocessing of this cocaine? Yes. Okay, and were there individuals who assisted you with that? Yes. Okay, and did you actually personally reprocess some of the cocaine? Yes. Okay. And going back to the first time that you, when you first became involved in this, you indicated you were in Texas. Did you at some point transport drugs from Texas to some other area? Yes. Okay. And in what, how much did you transport? 86 kilos of cocaine. 86 kilos of cocaine. And in what type of vehicle? A white Lincoln town car. Okay, and how is it that the organization transported drugs? They utilized hidden compartment cars. Hidden? Hidden compartments within various cars and limousines. Can you describe some of the vehicles that were used to transport the cocaine? Yes, we had two Navigator Super Stretch limos. And were those vehicles equipped with hidden compartments? Yes. And do you know who installed those hidden compartments? Yes. And who was that? 
a gentleman by the name of Pior from Florida area. And how is it that you know that that person installed hidden compartments in these vehicles? I delivered vehicles to him for the installation of hidden compartments, as well as took vehicles to be serviced, as well as picked vehicles up once they were done with the install of the hidden compartments. And do you know whether that individual, Pior, was indicted in this case also? Yes. And describing the remaining vehicles, please. You said two, two super stretch Lincoln Navigators. Okay. It was a white Lincoln Town Car Limousine. There was two black Lincoln Town Car Limousines. There was a black Mark 7 Lincoln, a Lincoln black Mark 7 Green. There was a white Cadillac. There was a Volvo, I believe it was an S60 or S55 black. We had a white Acura too, don't remember. What about an Infinity? Yeah, an Infinity G35. And were all of those vehicles equipped with these hidden compartments? Yes. And would you explain to the jurors, please, how these compartments operated? The compartments were built basically to conceal the cocaine that we were carrying in it. So they would be hidden behind natural door panels. So to the naked eye, you wouldn't know that the panels were there. That was a way we hid the cocaine and transported it from state to state to conceal the fact that what we were doing to law enforcement. Basically, we would put the cocaine into these hidden compartments. They closed with a mechanism called actuators, and they also were equipped with a vacuum machine, which took the air out of the compartments, so the cocaine would basically go unnoticed or undetected by canines. Did everyone involved in this organization know how to operate and or open these traps? Objection, Your Honor, as to what everyone else knew about the traps? The objection is sustained to the question as asked. You can, I think, restate it. I will judge. Did you know how to operate the compartments? Yes. And were you aware of others who knew how to operate the compartments? Yes. Okay. Did you actually observe others operate the compartments? Yes. Okay. And for instance, the Lincoln Navigator limo. How many kilograms of cocaine? What was the capacity of that particular vehicle? How many kilograms of cocaine could you put in that vehicle? Both Lincoln Navigators had eight separate compartments, which were hidden behind the seats within the Navigator, the passenger seats within the Navigator. It had eight compartments, and we could fit anywhere from 186 to 190 kilos of cocaine. And for instance, what about the Volvo? The Volvo, we could fit 20 kilos, 18 to 20, 8 to 10 kilos per side. Okay, and where were the hidden compartments in the Volvo located? They were hidden on the armrest side within the back seats of the Volvo, back seat of the Volvo. What about the Infinity? The same as well with the Infinity. The compartments were hidden in the side panels on both sides within the back seat. And what about the Lincoln Town Car limos? Where were they? They were hidden on the side of the vehicle in the rear where the passengers would sit. And did you also use these vehicles? That is, you and other members of the organization used these vehicles to transport cocaine proceeds or money derived from the sale of the cocaine? Yes. And how much money could be stored in the hidden compartments, to your knowledge? There was a time where I assisted Terry. In the Lincoln Stretch Navigator, we got $9 million within those vehicles. And where did you do that? Where did you load that vehicle? In Canton. In Canton, Michigan? Yes. Okay. You mentioned earlier that the cocaine would come to you in Detroit and that you participated in the reprocessing, if you will, of the cocaine. Is that right? Yes. And where was that conducted in the Detroit area, if anywhere? In the Detroit area, we had two, maybe three apartments in the Canton area. Okay. 
we had a house we utilized. I believe it's on Mission Lane in Farmington Hills. Okay. We had a house on, I don't recall the street, but it was in the eight mile Southfield area of Detroit. Was that anyone's house who was associated with this organization? Yes, it's Michael Green's house. Did he go by any other name? Freak, Holyfield, Cocky, Black Mike. What about you? Did you go by any other names? Yes. What is your nickname? AR. What about Terry Flannery? Did he go by any other nicknames? Yes. What were they? Hank, Polly, Randy Seville. That's all I recall right now. Did he go by the nickname T? T, Southwest T or T? Southwest T or T? Yes. What about Demetrius Flannery? Did he go by any other names? Yes. What were they? Za, Meech, that's all I recall. Okay, I'm showing you Government's Exhibit 836. Take a look at it over here. I think there's a glare, Your Honor. I just wanted to query, are you going to start using the screen? Yes. All right, I'm going to turn out some of the lights. I think you will be able to see the screen better. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm showing you Government's Proposed Exhibit Number 836. Mr. Boyd, can you tell me who is depicted there? Terry Flannery. Okay, and is that the person you described as Hank T. Polly Southwest T. and the person you said was involved in this organization? Yes. And what was his role in this organization? He was a co-leader of the organization. And who was the other leader? Demetrius Flannery. And can you describe the organization's structure, if you will? You have already testified that there were over hundreds of members. What was the structure of the organization? We had Terry and Demetrius Flannery, who essentially were the heads of the family. Under them were leaders of the family who took direct orders from them and sometimes assisted them with meeting the source of the cocaine. Who were some of those individuals who did that? Eric Bivens, Rap or Chad, Derek Peguse, William Turner, Marlon Welch, Paul Buford, Wayne Joyner. And the individuals you just mentioned, have all of those individuals been indicted in this case? Yes. And what's the next level of management, if you will, for the organization? Under the leaders are managers. Is that what you became at some point? Yes. Okay. And who did that along with you? That was myself, my brother Benjamin Johnson. In Atlanta, there was a gentleman by the name of 50. In New York, there was a gentleman we call Papa. What about St. Louis? St. Louis, it was Danny, or we called him Dogman. Anybody else in St. Louis who helped manage St. Louis? Yes, Texas, Cuzzo. Do you know his real name? Yes. What is that? Terrence Short. Is he related to anyone else in this case? Yes. Who is he related to? He's the first cousin of Terry and Demetrius Flannery. What about Marlon Welch? Is he related to anyone else in this case? Yes, he's the stepson to Terry Flannery. Okay, and what about any other locations? Can you think of any other managers? In Alabama, there was a gentleman by the name of Wu. Okay, you mentioned that Terry also went by the name of Randy Seville, is that right? Yes. Would you pull up 837, please? Can you identify who that is in the photograph, Mr. Boyd? Yes, Terry Flannery. Okay, after the managers who, what are the roles of were there other individuals who had a certain role that they fulfilled for the organization? Yes, under the managers were distributor managers. Okay, and who were some of the distributors that you recall? In Detroit, there was Harold Wilcox. 
Okay. Gordon King, Rodney Still. And was Rodney Still related to anyone in this case? Yes, he's... Was it Rodney or Randy? Randy Still. He was Terry Flannery and Demetrius Flannery's brother-in-law. He was married to their sister. Is it fair to say that there were a number of people who were related to one another in this organization? Yes. Okay. Did the majority of the people come from the Southwest Detroit area? Yes. Okay. In addition to those individuals that you just named, Harold Wilcox, Gordon King, Randy Steele, were they also indicted in this case? Yes. Were there any other distributors in this area that you were aware of? Big Ken. I don't recall his first name. That's all I recall right now. Okay. And then there was another level. Strike that. Strike that. Did you know of any of the distributors in other areas of the country? Yes. Who was that? In New York, there was Papa. Okay. A gentleman by the name of Paul. In Atlanta, there was William Marshall. In St. Louis, there was Fat Cat. And do you see... I'm sorry, go ahead. Cuffy, Magic. Okay. And do you know any of them by their real names? That is Cuffy, Magic, and Fat Cat? Yes, I know Fat Cat by his real name. And what's his real name? Robert Sills. Okay. Do you see him in the courtroom? Yes. Will you point to him, please? Right there. Let the record reflect that the witness has identified Robert M. Sills. Okay, who else? Anybody else in St. Louis? That's all I recall. They were the main three. Okay, any other individuals that you are aware of who were distributors of the organization's cocaine? Yes. Where else? In Atlanta, as I said before, William Marshall and 50 were manager distributors. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Alabama, Wu. There were a couple of other gentlemen, but I don't recall their names in Alabama. What about Kentucky? In Kentucky, we had two gentlemen. One we called Pink Suit Cuzzo, and there was another gentleman we used to utilize who was also getting fake IDs for the organization. Okay, do you remember his name? No, I don't recall. Did you ever have a fake ID? No, ma'am. Okay, were you aware that other members of the organization had a fake ID? Yes. And what type of fake ID had they acquired? Kentucky State. It was either Kentucky State or Tennessee, I believe, IDs. Was it driver's license or state IDs? driver's licenses. Okay. And William Marshall, did he serve in any other capacity for the organization? Yes. What did he do? He's a gentleman who used to help us to acquire real estate. He used to help us acquire high-end automobiles. He used to get driver's license, birth certificates, social security cards as well prior to him becoming involved in the organization, part of the organization. Oh, hold on, are you going to show more photographs or can I turn the lights back on? I'm going to go to that in just a few minutes. If you just give me a few minutes. All right. Now go to the next level of workers, Mr. Boyd, if there is another level. Is there? Yes. Okay, describe that. Who was that? The drivers of the organization. Okay, and who were some of the drivers of the organization? There was Benjamin Smith. Okay, has he been indicted in this case? Yes. Okay, who else? There was Derek White. Okay, and was Derek White a member? Yes. And to your knowledge, has he been prosecuted? Yes. And where, if you know? In Missouri. Okay, and do you know the circumstances under? Yes. What is that? He was driving the black Volvo I referenced to earlier, and he had 10 kilos of cocaine in the car with him. And was anyone else with him? Yes. Who was that? 
Joseph Cook? And what was his role, if any, in this organization? He was a driver as well. And how do you know that they had 10 kilograms of cocaine in that vehicle? Through talking with Terry Flannery. Objection, Your Honor. Wait a second, wait a second. Well, the question is leading. I said, how do you know? Wait, what's the basis of his knowledge? I withdraw the question. You withdraw it, then I don't have to make a ruling. Very well, Judge, that's fair. See? Okay, who else? You mentioned drivers being Benjamin Smith. You said Derek White, Joseph Cook, any others? Yes. And who was that? Charles Parson. Okay, and is he related to you in any way? Yes. How is he related to you? He was my first cousin. Okay, he was a driver also? Yes. And who else? I believe his name was Bruce Martin. We called him B-Smooth. Okay, was he indicted in this case? Yes. Okay, and was your cousin Charles Parson indicted in this case? Yes. Who else? There was Gregory West. And was he indicted in this case? Yes. Who else? A gentleman by the name of Nathan Glutton. Okay. We called him Old Man Nate. Okay, was he indicted in this case? Yes. Who else? Otis Hawkins. Okay. Dexter Hussey. Okay, and was he indicted in this case? Yes. And are you familiar with anybody by the name of Walter Carroll? Walter Carroll, Stanley Lackey. You said Walter Carroll and Stanley Lackey? Yes. What, if anything, did they do? Drivers of money and cocaine. And are you familiar with someone by the name of Derek Peguse? Yes, ma'am. What was his role in the organization? He was the leader of the organization. He was Terry's right-hand man. He was a gentleman who pitched in in the absence of Terry Flannery. And where was he located? In California. And what about other people other than drivers? Was there another role that others played to facilitate the distribution of cocaine for this organization? Yes. And how would you describe their role? There were gentlemen that helped us out within what we called the laboratory. Okay, and is the laboratory where you would reprocess the cocaine as you described earlier? Yes. Okay, and what else did they do? They helped within the laboratory? Are you asking me within the laboratory? No, I just mean in general. Other than reprocessing the cocaine, what else? What were their other duties? They helped count money. Okay. Unload vehicles, money, and drugs. Okay, and you also mentioned that there... Oh, and who were some of those individuals, if you will, please? Charles Howard. Okay, was he indicted in this case? Yes. And who else? There was David Solomon. Was he indicted in this case? Yes. What was his role, though, David Solomon? He was an actual, what we call the chemist. He was the actual guy who would actually rock the cocaine back up to a hard form. Did you receive any training on how to do that yourself? Yes. And from whom did you receive that training? David Solomon. Okay, and who else worked as in the labs and or counting money and... Marlon Welch helped out in the labs. Okay. Terrence Short, Texas Cuzzo worked out in the labs. Torino Hightower, Michael Green, Christopher Triplett, Little Ricky. I don't recall his last name. That was Tonessa's nephew, which is Terry Flannery's makeshift wife. And to your knowledge, have all of those individuals been indicted? Yes. Okay, and you mentioned that William Marshall was involved 
in addition to distributing some of the organization's cocaine in Atlanta, also responsible for acquiring homes and real estate for you. Did the organization also have other people who acquired things such as that for the members? Yes. And can you identify or name some of those individuals? Priscilla Smith. Okay. William Marshall's brother. Is Priscilla Smith related to anybody else associated in this case? Yes. Who is she? She's the mother of two other drivers, which are twin sisters, Monica and Monique Cook. And have they been indicted in this case? Yes. What about Joseph Cook? Is he related to any of them? Yes, Priscilla Smith is Joseph Cook's mother, and the twins, Monica and Monique, are sisters. Okay, what did they do to assist or facilitate some of the things that the members acquired? We used to fly her to various states to acquire real estate by means of using her name. We used to use Priscilla Smith as well to fly money to different states. Okay, and was there anyone else who assisted the organization in doing that? I know William's wife, that's a separate entity, used to do it. William's brother. William who? William Marshall, his brother. Okay, and what about did you have any car dealers or jewelers who assisted in acquiring certain assets for the organization? Yes. And who were they? We used Jacob the jeweler out of New York. And how do you know? And what did Jacob the jeweler do for the organization? He used to sell us a lot of high-end jewelry, watches, diamonds, custom-made medallions for the organization. And how did the organization or its members pay for that jewelry? We took him cash payments. Was it from the cash that was derived from the sale of the cocaine? Yes. And did you transport cash to Jacob the jeweler personally? Yes. What about car dealers? Did you have individuals who would assist the organization? Yes. With acquiring vehicles? Yes. And who were they? Larry Still. He was a gentleman out of Colorado who we used to purchase some of the compartment vehicles, motorhomes. Ron Canyon was another gentleman out of California who we used to utilize for vehicles. There was 404 Motorsports out of Buckhead, Georgia. We used to utilize to purchase high-end vehicles or compartment vehicles as well. And those individuals you mentioned, Jacob the Jeweler, Ron Canyon, Larry Steele, had they been indicted in this case? Yes. 